I had to call in a few favors to get the goods on the Claw Gang's local operator. Dimitri, a sort of underworld celebrity, equally at home in high-class art circles and shady back-alley crimes. He was once a passionate young art student who worked hard to develop his own visionary style. Unfortunately, the art world wasn't quite ready for his kinetic aesthetic. So he gave them what they wanted and started forging old masterpieces. His way of punishing those with bad taste. Dimitri now runs a nightclub on the west side. The thumpy music, colorful light shows, and a hint of danger lure in chic young patrons from far and wide. And it's here, hidden somewhere, where we'll find the clockwork tail feathers. What Dimitri plans to do with the clockwork part is beyond me. But those plans end tonight. Sly Cooper and the gang. In the Black Chateau. Hey, welcome back to Sly 2, Band of Thieves. Here we are in Paris, France. Don't get used to seeing a, a scene like that where you get into the, the hideout like this in uh, good quality. <laughs> That'll make sense soon. Uh, but speaking of quality, I meant to mention this is a PS2 game, but it was also re-released on a PS3 Sly collection of all the first three games. Uh, which is where this is being played on, which is why the image is so crisp and clear and nice. The Sly collection on PS3 is the exact same game, but with uh, better resolution and a different aspect ratio. I tell you, Bentley, it's gonna be a real pleasure robbing this nightclub. I share in your enthusiasm, but before we hit the inside, we'll need to do a little reconnaissance work. What do you have in mind? I've installed this special antenna on the safe house to help with our first job, hacking into Dimitri's satellite array. The coordinates for the job start beacon have been uploaded to your binocucum. Make your way to this position, and I'll give you a full briefing on our objective. I'm on my way. Immediately we'll see how this game vastly differs from the first one. We have a huge uh, HUD world up here, if you want to call it that. That's, you know, that's not new necessarily, but... the L3 button, you know, press the left analog stick. I'll beam some virtual markers into your feedback. They'll help you find your way around. If no markers are in view, Use the right analog stick to move the camera and look around for them. Remember, the view is always better from the rooftops. Thanks, Bentley. Thanks for interrupting me. Um, I didn't even get to kill him. <laughs> I need you to hack into Dimitri's communication array so that we'll have access to his database. How am I supposed to do that? To start, you'll need to get to the top of that tower. Then, reposition the satellite dish to point at my safe house antenna. If you want to climb on stuff, jump and hit the circle button to grab hold. Try climbing up that pipe. Right. Jump and press the circle button to climb pipes. I'm on it. Do you get it yet? You're supposed to jump and hit the circle button. It's almost as if it's obvious. Now because there's more- Hey, an enemy! Uh, another aspect in which this game is very different. Combat doesn't really work the way it used to. You don't just have the one hit and you can get a horseshoe and get an extra hit and whatnot. You have a health meter, which is pretty interesting. It can get healed up with healing things, which we have seen uh, a couple of times when they randomly spawn out, out uh, among coins. When you're near these markers, press the circle button to use the object. Great, the first one's in position. I've uploaded the next waypoint into your thief mask imager. Remember, click the L3 button to locate your next objective. Sorry if Bentley is getting annoying with the tutorials, but it's the first place. We need to just get some basic things out of the way. Remember, this is a game meant for kind of young kids and upwards. So we need to be a bit extra obvious with some things. Anyway, I think you get the idea now. 
I'm just going to ignore Bentley, I'm sorry. Um, this game doesn't take you into different levels. It's not strictly a platforming game. Uh, well, I, obviously it's a platforming game. It's not strictly just a platforming game, is what I should say. The first game I classified as a stealth platformer. Am I going too far? Oh, there it is. <laughs> this game is much more... Whereas the first one was a lot more a platformer than anything stealth at all, this game is a lot more stealth than anything platformer at all. It's kind of... It's a very different direction that I think is a very nice, good one. And the idea is that we complete missions like this, scattered around... Well, they're called jobs. <laughs> that are scattered around this place and whatnot, and Slice Hat is off. <laughs> I'm downloading from Dimitri's mainframe as we speak. All in a night's work. So, where do we go from here? Your next job is to break into the nightclub and take some reconnaissance photos of the clockwork tail feathers. To get inside, you'll have to sneak through an old wine cellar beneath town. Okay, I'll head up for the cellar. By the way, I want to make special mention to the in-game models of the of the characters, how they've improved since the first game. In the first game, when you had the binocular co binocucom conversations like that, binocucom conversation, that's difficult. The models looked seriously derpy, <laughs> and you could move around the heads while they were talking, it was really weird. None of that here, and the models just generally looked better. How about we enter this mystic, mi mi mis mysterious building? Hey, Murray! Good to see you too, big buddy. The wine cellar is guarded by those rats. Bentley thought you might like some help clearing them out. Sounds like fun. You and me, back to back? Totally. Outnumbered. Fighting impossible odds. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, pal. Let's get to it. I love Mary so much. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. Before we get into things, just always a good advice to break as much as you can because you'll get money. And as I said, money is super useful. Also, what we're already getting really into in this game, which I really like, which is a huge improvement over the first one, there's a lot of cooperation with your teammates. Your um, buddy pal men are very much involved in this whole thing, which they really weren't in the first game. Bentley, of course, talked to you a lot, but especially Murray was just really in the back seat. Um, in a more literal sense, he was in the front seat because he's the driver, but <laughs> you get the idea. Let me lower those bars for you. There you go. To get over this thing, you'll have to double jump. Hit the X button to jump. Then, while in the air, press it again to get some extra air time. Looks like you're on your own from here. Eh, I'm used to it. Thanks for the help. Anytime, partner. It's just me who thought that sounded really passive-aggressive. <laughs> Are you tired? Oh, uh, let me help you, Murray. Anyway. Uh, oh, notice the blue sparks under the tables here? You can crawl under tables. Which is going to be a slightly important- <laughs> slightly. Important mechanic later on. Uh, not much later on, mind you. I'm just going to break some things, because breaking things is always fun, and it gives you money. I just wish this would be in real life, but in real life it's more so if you break things, it technically kind of costs you money. Uh, Murray is a liar, which I hate to say, but you don't need to double jump here. You can just jump on the cra uh, crash can and do it like that. There we go. Now we have some lasers. If you get hit by these, you'll lose health, but you can't just use your invincibility frames to get around it. Bentley! I know what I'm supposed to do! There's blue sparks, it's kind of obvious! <laughs> um, I have a bit of a story with these tables. See, we have a, you know, we have these lasers, which we can't get past. We need to use the tables. I don't know how, but on my most recent playthrough of this, keep in mind, this was not long ago. I wasn't just some dumb kid or anything. Somehow, under this table, I managed to get turned around. I'm not joking. I got turned around so bad that I ended up going backwards. Going back through this table. Through these lasers again. I figured, oh, it's another jump. It's another gate thing. Oh, well, this one I have to double jump. Interesting. So Murray wasn't lying after all. Oh, here's some more things I can break. Nice. I didn't really get where I was supposed to go. I exited the door despite the fucking symbol there because I figured... Where else am I supposed to go? There's nowhere else I've, I can go. This game is, you know, generally kind of linear <laughs> in, term, in terms of their missions. It was not one of my prouder moments. But anyway, we just need to get past the lasers here. Feel free to break things because it gives you money. This table is useless. I don't know why it's here. I enjoyed the, uh, <laughs> the cards on there, though. 
Now, as I'm ignoring Bentley telling us already, these guards are kind of dangerous. We can kill them later on. And I don't really get why we can't just attack them normally now, but we're not supposed to. We crawl under the table to not get, um, to not get fucking killed by them. Uh, can I bring attention to one thing though? I know I'm getting sidetracked a lot, but I love the noises that come when you walk in air guards. It's amazing. We have some- we have effective ways of killing guards in essentially one hit, technically two, it doesn't matter. We'll get into that later, but for some reason this guard is special. You cannot even attack him, even if there's no way you'd lose or anything. It's- how did this money get here? Wow. It's weird. If you get caught, the game will tell you like, in this intro mission, you need to not attack and do 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 You cannot do things the way you want to do them. <laughs> Wait for this guy to turn his flashlight around. Excuse me? Well, th well, there you go. In this training job, you must avoid being seen by the flashlight guards. Well, I know, but I thought I did. Yeah, the flashlight guards, as you can probably expect, they don't have any vision at all, aside from their flashlights. It's really weird. I don't get it when... I mean, I obviously get it from a gameplay standpoint when games do that, but it's completely logical. Not that games tend to be completely logical or anything, but, you know. Okay, that's gotta be enough to decide, right? Okay, you don't want to deal with that too much, just get in the, the vent here. Uh, because the flashlight, when it goes back to your area over there, it can go kind of far. I've gotten caught by wasting time because I wanted to get money from the TVs and things and whatnot. Oh, did you hear what Bentley said, even though I talked over it? We need to take down that guard. Yeah, we do. This is what I was talking about. If you... Bentley's already saying this, but I'm ignoring him because I say it better? Okay, no, I don't know. What you want to do? Oh, wow. Well. Um, there's an attack button with square, but there's also an attack button with triangle, which has some interesting implication. It hits upwards. What you want to do is to hit the guard from the back without being spotted with a triangle and then a square button. Instant KO. Extremely useful move. One you don't want to forget, but you probably want. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Break some things. I don't get how he doesn't hear you doing that, but whatever. He's dead now. It doesn't matter what he hears or not. For some reason, you can also walk on these. <laughs> I don't think there's any point in the game where that, you know, matters, but it's an interesting detail. Yes, thank you, Bentley. I already said so. And hey, it's our old pal buddy man, Dimitri. He looks like he's putting on some sort of show. Le, le Theatre. Formidable. Yeah, Le Theatre Formidable. Formidable. Le Cavale Le Cavale Le Zad? Le Cavale Le Zad? Oh my god. That sounds weird, I'm sorry, but <laughs> this game is hilarious, especially it's it's French and East, if you want to call it that. <laughs> it's so stupid, I love it. And we saw a lot of that in the first game too, like Le Police. Well, Le Police might actually be the word, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think most of the French in this game is actual French. Anyway, sorry if it feels like I'm wasting time breaking all these things, but trust me, money is important, extremely so. Um... I don't think any of these pictures have anything interesting. I'm pretty sure they don't. If you get in a fight with those rats, the sneak attack won't work. It's purely a stealth move. Yeah, Bentley, you've, you've already said this once, and I've already said it like twice. Anyway, fighting horse like this isn't really a problem. It's certainly, um, I don't know, it's it's an interesting experience. <laughs> no, but what I mean is you need to, uh, at your first tries, it can be a little bit awkward. It can feel like you get some unfair hits and whatnot. There's some simple things you need to remember when fighting. It's that you knock down an enemy, it falls down. You don't want to go near him then at all, because if he jumps up, he's going to most likely hit you and give you a bad time. Anyway, we have a little theater here. I like this a lot. We can beep, break the piano. I don't know why the piano doesn't... Ah, air vent. I know, Bentley! Judge I get it! Angle, it <laughs> it's pretty simple! <laughs> Again, the tutorials, they'll be... They'll be gone soon enough. We just need to get past the first part. Hey! I know that guy. The heart of Dimitri's operation. Head for those windows and take some reconnaissance photos. Tap the R3 button. You know, click the right analog stick to bring up your binocucom. It's already outfitted with a spy cam. Fly, use the right analog stick to zoom in and out on photo targets. 
Tap the R1 button to take a picture when you've got a good shot. Here we go. We have some things we need to take a picture of. First off, money print. <laughs> Wrong button. Okay, first off, generator. <laughs> that generator seems to be powering the security systems down here. That was signed by the MGMT? I'm not actually sure what that's supposed to be. The mighty great men team? <laughs> no women allowed, apparently. Given their rare alloy, they'll never wear out. Unlimited forged money. Uh, he went behind the stupid generator. How am I supposed to take a picture? Okay, thank you. That's our target, Dimitri, professional lounge lizard and international forger. That should do it, Sly. Head back to the safe house and we'll cook up a plan of attack. I love that sound. You get it every time you complete a job, I love it. The recon photos are a grim reminder of what the modern thief is up against. Spotlights, stepped up patrols, the sum of it all renders a direct assault impossible. To solve this puzzle, I'm going to need some more intelligence. First, replace this bugged painting with one Dimitri has in his office. Once in place, we should be able to listen in on his communications. Second, if you see the boss, tail him. We might learn something from studying his movements. Once we've got a proper understanding of the operation, those clockwork tail feathers are as good as ours. 